Hey, how's it going guys? So we're back with another Star Wars reaction video. If you're new channel, welcome. This one is called the 10 most terrifying super weapons in all of Star Wars. If, and it is by Red5 and I have been watching a lot of his videos and he even reached out to me uh, like in one of my videos. I think it was the lightsaber, um, I think it was the lightsaber variant one. So I was really surprised that someone as big as him would reach out to someone who's just a small time creator. <laughs> but anyways, a shout out and credit goes to Red5 for the video. Now, super weapons. I say the most uh, known, well-known super weapon in uh, Star Wars universe would be the Death Star because that is in multiple uh, movies and that is pretty much the one that everyone knows. But another movie, uh, I mean not movie, another super weapon that comes straight to mind would be, and it's also on the thumbnail, would be the Star Forge from Knights of the Old Republic and Revit. <coughs> God, man. And Malak used it to create a huge armada and army. So I say um, the Star Forge is more devastating and more useful uh, than the Death Star. And another one I can think of is Starkiller Base from Episode 7. Because that thing was massive, like bigger than um, a Star Destroyer. Because it was literally a planet. And not only that, uh, the Death Star has to be within range of a planet to just shoot it. But this thing is like a hyperspace weapon. It could shoot... A planet like miles uh, light uh, light years away so i find that really interesting but still for me my personal favorite one would be the star forge so without anything else let's jump into the video and see what kind of super weapons red 5 will be talking about massive super weapons have been a part of the star wars franchise since the death star's appearance in the very first movie in 1977 with several more introduced in the decades since in both star wars legends and canon timelines there have been several super weapons to dwarf the destructive power of even the Death Stars, monstrosities with the power for unimaginable annihilation. With that in mind, today we're going over the worst of the worst. In no particular order, these are the 10 most terrifying super weapons in all of Star Wars. Oh yeah, and there was that, um, some sort of like Death Star laser Star cannon beat- Forge. A giant below the Star Destroyers shipyard, in Episode 9. The Star Forge was designed to create the most powerful <clears throat> army of all time. It was constructed by the Rakatan Infinite Empire in 30,000 BBY, using slaves from many subject worlds to do so. The Star Forge drew energy and matter from a nearby star, which, when combined with the power of the dark side of the Force, was capable of creating an endless supply of ships, droids, and other war material. This technological marvel came this at is my favorite. cost, as the Rakata themselves were a cruel and savage species. The Star Forge began feeding off these negative traits inherent in its creators, and as a result, it became an immense tool of dark side power. The Star Forge, now a fusion of technology and dark side energies, began corrupting the Rakata in order to gain the immense power it required to operate itself and ultimately cause the collapse of the Rakata Empire. The Sith Lords Darth Revan and Darth Malak discovered the Star Forge. While Revan was aware of the semi-living superweapon's ability to corrupt its users and limited his contact with the dark side superweapon, Darth Malak planned to explore deeper into the Star Forge after disposing of his master. Ultimately, the Star Forge was destroyed during the Battle of Rakata Prime, the final campaign I'm of the sad. Jedi Civil War. The superweapon was plunged into the Rakatan Sun by Revan. The World Devastators One of the many nightmarish superweapons used by the Dark Empire, I don't know this. led by the reborn Emperor Palpatine in Star Wars Legends, World Devastators were gargantuan automated monstrosities that tore planets apart, absorbed their natural resources, and produced more hardware for the Imperial War Machine. World Devastators were virtually indestructible from the outside, making their destruction of planets a slow and excruciating process for their respective populations. Like the Star Forge, World Devastators not only create more vessels and starfighters for the Dark Empire, but they also fuel and reinforce themselves with the planetary resources they consume. Theoretically, the size and power of a World Devastator was unlimited, for as long as they could consume planets, they kept growing larger and deadlier. Center Point Station In Star Wars Legends, the ancient yeah, beings known as the Celestials constructed Center Point Station, 
a space station larger than the Death Star and potentially more destructive. Centerpoint Station wow. was capable of creating a hyperspace tractor beam that could move planets, stars, and even black holes across the galaxy. Centerpoint Station Damn. was used hundreds of thousands of years before the main Star Wars saga to create the Corellian and Voltar systems, the Hapes Cluster, the Rathal Rift, and the Maw Cluster of black holes. Centerpoint Station's tractor Dude, that is beam powerful. could be used to destroy just as easily as it could to create making it one of the galaxy's deadliest potential superweapons. Centerpoint was eventually destroyed during the Second Galactic Civil War when it was made to target itself. The Malachor Superweapon, a Sith superweapon constructed oh, yeah. by the ancient Sith Lord Darth Tannis, the Malachor Superweapon required a giant kyber crystal to be powered, housed in a temple on Malachor. During the Great Scourge of Malachor, a battle which took place between the ancient Jedi Order and Sith Empire, the weapon fired and petrified the warriors battling there. Their petrified bodies were all that remained, left littered across the battlefield. The horrors of Malachor would go on to inform Jedi legends for millennia to come, and stories of the battle were interpreted as tales or forewarnings for Jedi younglings. Meanwhile, during Darth Maul's training, Darth Sidious brought Maul to the site of the battle to teach him about the fall of the Sith. The petrified remains of the battlefield were later discovered by Ahsoka Tano, Kanan Jarrus, and Ezra Bridger, and the weapon was activated and nearly fired again by Maul, but the temple was collapsed. The Death Stars we all knew this was coming. The oldest and yep. most famous superweapons in Star Wars are the Death Stars. The moon-sized mobile battle stations could destroy an entire planet in a single blast, allowing the Empire to drop all pretense of politics and the Senate, ruling through fear as Emperor Palpatine had designed. This necessitated the quick construction of the second Death Star following the first station's destruction at the hands of Luke Skywalker during the Battle of Yavin, but the station's development also led to the creation of comparable superweapons. In Star Wars Legends, the Tarkin and the Darksaber, not that black Mandalorian lightsaber, were both stripped down iterations of the Death Stars, with the Empire using the former and the Hut Cartel acquiring the latter. While smaller than the Death Stars, both were capable of destroying the Tarkin. Planets, I never heard of Star it. Killer Base. Located there we in the go. unknown regions of the galaxy, the Jedi <clears throat> world of Ilum was where the gathering took place. This was the sacred ceremony wherein Jedi younglings would venture into the planet's ice caves to retrieve their lightsaber kyber crystals. However, after Order 66, Ilum was invaded by the Galactic Empire and mined for those kyber crystals, inflicting irreparable damage to the planet. The First Order, the Empire's successor state, continued to exploit the planet, building a massive superweapon into an artificial trench. This turned Ilum into Starkiller Base, whose massive energy beams could cut through hyperspace and simultaneously destroy an entire star system's worth of planets from any point in the galaxy. The power of the planet-sized superweapon was demonstrated in The Force Awakens when the First Order destroyed Hosnian Prime, the capital of the New Republic, and five other worlds in the Hosnian system. Around 155 billion were killed in the event that became Dude, that known crazy. as the Hosnian Cataclysm. Zeistin-class Star Destroyers In canon, the Final Order's Zeistin-class Star Destroyers are smaller yet deadlier counterparts to the Legends Timeline's Eclipse-class Dreadnoughts. Dude, Darth those things Sidious are massive. ordered the construction of the vessels during the reign of the original Galactic Empire, completing a fleet of over 10,000 ships by the events of the Rise of Skywalker. Zeistin Star Destroyers were quite similar to standard Imperial One-class Star Destroyers, but the key difference is that they were each armed with a super laser capable of destroying a planet, as seen when one obliterated Kajimi. The mobility and relatively small size in comparison to Super Star Destroyers and the Death Stars and the vast quantity of the Zeistin class destroyers made them one of the galaxy's greatest threats. Unfortunately for Palpatine, he would again be killed and his glorious fleet was destroyed during the Battle of Exegol. He never got the to galaxy use them. Gun, another Dark Empire super weapon from Star Wars Legends, the Galaxy Gun is a mobile Man, Palpatine likes super weapons. <laughs> like most of the Dark Empire's deadliest vessels, 
the Galaxy Gun was all big. but impervious to even the most advanced of New Republic weaponry. The Galaxy Gun would strike any world from anywhere in the galaxy, firing particle disintegrator warheads through hyperspace. The warheads had extremely powerful shields and varying explosive payloads, allowing them to destroy a city, continent, or even an entire planet. Basically, a Death Star with unlimited rage. The Omega Frost Devised by the Tage Company for the Galactic Empire, the Omega Frost saw use in the year following the Battle I never heard of this one either. in Legends. Two deceptively small conductor towers could freeze anything caught between them and cause them to shatter. The Omega Frost was intended to be used on Rebel ships, but its range was theoretically unlimited as anything caught between the two towers could be frozen and destroyed, even whole planets or entire star systems. The Omega wow. Frost could destroy any material with ease and was effective in deep space, making it a worthy substitute for the first Death Star following its destruction. The Sun Crusher Of all the Empire's super a weapons sun crusher? Come out of the Maw installation, none are deadlier than the Sun Crusher, a vessel only slightly larger than a starfighter with far greater destructive potential than even the Death Stars. The Sun Crusher could wow. fire a resonance torpedo into a star, causing it to supernova and destroy an entire system. Despite its size, the Sun Crusher's quantum crystalline armor rendered it nearly invincible, with the vessel enduring a glancing strike from a prototype Death Star super laser in destroying the bridge of an Imperial 1-class Star Destroyer by flying right through it. But, out of all of these deadly super weapons, which do you think is the most terrifying? Which is your favorite? Let me know in the comments. Come join us to chat more at our community Discord server. Alright, well, there you guys have it. So that was the 10 uh, most terrifying super weapons in all of Star Wars by Red5. And shout out and credit goes to Red5 because I really like this video. Now... Out of the 10 super uh, weapons, I only I only knew like about four of them. Uh, the Star Forge, the Death Star, and um, the Star Destroyers with the super uh, laser uh, weapon uh, beneath them and Star Killer Base. But I did not know of any of the others, so that was really cool to learn. But either way, in my opinion, I say the most destructive one would be... Well, I mean, the thing is, for me, my favorite one would be uh, the Star Forge. Because one you can produce endless armies and a fleet armada so instead of just destroying planets you can actually conquer them and use them so that's why i say that is more effective and more destructive than just blowing other uh, blowing up other planets that, uh, that's just my opinion though but anyways the star forge will be my choice in both my favorite and the most destructive but which one would you say is your favorite and the most destructive please put down in the comments below all right, that's all I got for today. So thank you so much for tuning in, guys. I really do appreciate it. Hit that notification bell so you know when I drop another video. And thank you so much for your continued support. It's what keeps the channel going. And if you guys have any other videos you guys want me to check out, put it down in the comments. I'll take a look at it. But until then, I'll see you guys next time.